Good morning, church, and uh, welcome to the live stream. Those of you who have uh, joined us earlier through the Zoom Bible study, and uh, it was a beautiful study, and uh, we thank God for providing us this uh, digital avenue in order for us to stay together, be able to see each other, and fellowship with each other in the digital uh, format. Um, and we should uh, continue to pray that God will soon provide us the opportunity to come and uh, meet with each other and be able to hug and uh, each other and, uh, and talk and fellowship uh, by sharing meals and uh, in the same way that uh, the apostles did uh, when they were here on earth. And so we look forward to that time and that blessing that uh, certainly God will provide for us. Um, I want to share some things with you this morning uh, as we open our service. And, uh, and certainly we have uh, some added uh, elements to our service uh, as we go along. And uh, we hope it uh, is a blessing to you. Uh, who are at home or wherever you may be, whether you are on your own uh, or whether you are together as a family. And, uh, and so thank you for joining us and may God bless you uh, this morning. I want to share also some other things with you. And that is last week I shared with you, I wanted to share with you um, some of the things I feel that uh, the, this COVID-19 virus is doing. And one of the things that has come across my heart is that the virus is certainly is getting rid of a very interesting notion, and that is that our faith is supposed to be practiced only on the weekend. Um, this certainly has taught us that faith is an element that needs to be present every single day, every single moment of our lives, because we just don't know when circumstances such as this come upon us. And, uh, and certainly, uh, these are the times that faith becomes very important. Uh, all that work that uh, God has done with us and all the work that we have uh, participated with God in helping us do in our own person and in our families certainly comes to fruition at times like this. And so uh, we want to, uh, to um, be mindful of that, that uh, certainly COVID-19 has done that, that faith is supposed to be lived uh, every single moment, every single day, and not just on the weekend. Another notion of the coronavirus that it has done for us, that I have found, is that it is challenging us as Christians uh, to give without receiving. There certainly isn't uh, anything that we can receive from circumstances like this, but there is things that we can give. And certainly uh, it is testing our fidelity testing our stewardship, that there is nothing in return, nothing in return, uh, and this is very key. And so there is no excuse, no excuse, uh, dear brothers and sisters, in our time for us to not to stop giving. And I'm not talking about tithes and offerings uh, uh, alone. I'm just talking about giving some of your time, giving uh, through a phone call to, to somebody out there, a member of the community, and just to give them a, a kind word, or to just from the window of your house, or from the driveway of your home, to say hello to your neighbor, and, uh, and uh, to send a card, uh, and so on. So, uh, because there's nothing to be received from that, but just the blessings from God. And so this is what I found that I think COVID-19 is doing to us as a church, and is doing to us as individuals. And so, um, uh, may God bless us that we recognize uh, these things that are uh, being allowed to uh, uh, be part of our lives at this time. I want to also remind you of a couple of uh, prayer requests that I think are very important for us. <coughs> and that is that uh, in our regular meetings, whether in Sabbath afternoon at 4 p.m., by the way, I want to continue reminding you that at 4 p.m., um, we continue to have fellowship and Bible study and prayer time. So join us at four. Uh, give yourself at least an hour and a half or so because that's how much time it seems we're spending on average uh, in our Zoom meeting at, uh, on Sabbath afternoon. But also, of course, um, primarily the Niagara Falls uh, members at uh, 6.30 p.m. Uh, on Tuesdays and primarily the uh, uh, St. Catherine members at uh, 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. And uh, we also have our Bible study um, and uh, meetings with our young people 
Uh, we started last night uh, from 8 to 9, uh, but we are thinking of maybe uh, having it from 7 to 8 for the younger Pathfinder age as they are coming now into becoming youth and, uh, and also maybe the older uh, generation who are beyond uh, into their 30s and 40s and, uh, and have an opportunity for them also to, uh, to come together and maybe do that Bible study from 8 to 9. And, uh, and so uh, uh, stay tuned for that. So those of you of, uh, of that uh, age group. Um, and so we want to continue praying uh, for the endeavors of the church um, in uh, maintaining us uh, together and continue to make uh, those phone calls uh, to each other. Uh, also, we want to continue praying for our frontline workers. It's very important that we pray for them. Um, and uh, because they certainly are a group who are in danger uh, and, uh, and they need our prayers. They need God to be there and protect them so they don't uh, become infected and uh, be put out of commission uh, with and, and, and people that are in need not have anyone to take care of them. So let's keep praying for those. And of course, uh, for those of you who may not know yet, but the Kazachenko family, in particular Scott, our brother Scott Kazachenko, uh, who is a member here at St. Catharines and who also is the director of the Heritage Green Nursing Home, uh, his mother passed away um, uh, about a week ago now. And so uh, please pray for the uh, Kazachenko family um, and uh, Scott in particular and, um, and just uh, make a phone call and uh, give your condolences to the family um, uh, if, you, uh, if you could, please. And so that's, those are the things that I want to remind you of at this time. So at this time, we will then continue with our service. There will be some elements that are added to our service this morning as we continue to do so and uh, may God bless us and uh, bless Andrew, uh, Brother Andrew, who is an elder at the Niagara Falls Church. He will be presenting the message this morning. So at this time, I would like to open with prayer, and uh, the program will continue um, without uh, any announcements. So may you be blessed, may God be blessed, and have a beautiful and pleasant afternoon. And at the end, uh, when Andrew is finished, uh, we will, I will be back to uh, just uh, uh, have a closing word and a closing prayer and, um, and a closing invitation. So let us pray at this time. Our gracious and loving Father, we are so thankful uh, for allowing us to continue uh, this uh, work of uh, serving your church. And we thank you for the energy that you have given us. We thank you for those who have been invited to participate and those who will continue to be uh, invited uh, to participate. It may it be a blessing and uh, a blessing to not only to them who participate, but also those who are uh, watching us uh, through the live stream and through the Zim, Zoom uh, platform. Lord, uh, we ask your Holy Spirit to continue with us uh, for this portion of the worship, uh, Sabbath worship, as uh, we enter this very special uh, time. May it be a blessing, and uh, may you bless Andrew as he presents to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. I'd like to uh, say happy Sabbath, everyone. I'd uh, like to know how many people here had the opportunity to attend Sabbath school this morning. It was a great, uh, great Sabbath school. Thank you very much for those that, that attended. Um, I'd like to uh, ask everyone that has the opportunity to uh, simply come on a journey with me today as we uh, go from wherever you are here in church, and I'd like to uh, ask our brother to play the first video. It's, it's the one with the actual video. Okay, uh, you can just play the, the song then. Uh, the, this, the, the song, yeah, that's fine. Lauren, I made a video this morning.
You know, to us as a people, worship is a really, really beautiful thing. It's an opportunity that we have as people of God to be able to ask God to put within us a new heart. 
or you could say it a different way if you wanted. You could ask God to help us dig a well so that the living water of truth, Jesus Christ, can flow through us. I've always been of the opinion that worship starts before worship actually begins at church. It's one of the reasons why God himself instituted the Sabbath, to start on a Friday so that we would be worshiping before Saturday even begins. So with that thought, I'd like to ask you to take a drive with me to church. You know, on this journey that we're taking to church today, we're asking God to, to give to us a new heart. We're asking God to, to help the living water flow through us to our community. And I think that this is a very, very important thing. One of the things that I've loved to do over the last number of years is whenever I take the opportunity to drive, I always have a, a prayer of blessing over the, the people that I see, the people on the roads, the people that are walking, those that are in their houses. A prayer of intercession is, uh, is a beautiful thing because it allows God to be able to come into their homes and be with them and bless them so that they too can have a knowledge and an understanding of who he is as Lord and Maker and King. I have asked Tabitha from the St. Catherine's Church to, to give us a hand with that experience today. As we drive the church, I've asked her to, to write a, a, a song that's, that's beautiful and that's encouraging and that's uplifting and allows us to be able to, to go on this journey to be able to, to talk and pray so that we can worship before worship begins. Thank you.
The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a princess who had many beautiful things. She had a beautiful dress and a beautiful table and a beautiful chair and a guitar tuner and a guitar and a painting. She was the princess of the land of the stuffed animals. She thought she was wonderful and she thought everyone should do everything for her. She didn't like to listen to anyone and she was very impatient and rude and careless and mean. She wasn't a very nice princess and she didn't like to make her bed. All of this was because she had a dark heart and her heart was breaking. There were times she was so unhappy, she didn't even care about the stuffed animals at all, and she threw them onto the floor. So to make herself feel better, she bought another painting, and then another painting, and then another painting. She looked in the mirror, and she watched TV. She told everyone that she was the best, but still she was very cranky and not nice. Her heart felt sick, and this made her feel even more unhappy. It felt icky and sticky like black tar and it smelled like lots and lots of old garbage. Ew! She wanted to change, but she didn't know what to do. And then she saw an ad in the paper for Dr. Happy Heart. He 
was the heart fixer. She asked him for help so that she wouldn't be mean anymore, and he said yes. But he told her that he could not fix her heart. It was made of stone. But what he could do was give her a new heart, a heart of flesh, a real heart, just the right heart for her, the perfect heart that would fit her for the rest of her life. This new heart would be called a Happy Heart Version 2. So she said yes. So the relationship started with lots of reading from the good book and lots of talking to the doctor. But the process worked and the princess got her heart change and the change was wonderful. Now she had a happy heart and it gave her joy and people liked to be around her and the stuffed animals like to be around her too. You know, this story is a lot like people that want to go to the kingdom of heaven. At first, they are not at all happy the way they are and they're unhappy with their lives and they ask for help. Now God is always willing to give them a new heart and the new heart causes a change in the person to want to be like the happy heart giver. And, well, the happy heart giver is Jesus. Thank you very much, boys and girls, for allowing me to tell you my story. Good morning, church family from the McClarties. I have told you all these things so you can have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath from the Stevenson. I will um, read a poem. And the title is The Source of the Living Water. Let us pray. When your life is like the driest desert and nothing ever quenches you, this poem is a prayer to you and for you. Yes, you, who is thirsty. This is an invitation to come to the well of the living water. Yes, the source of the living water is Jesus Christ. His source refreshes and revives. No. Never will his well dry out. Come today. His living water is continuously flowing. And I will draw from the source and my soul will be quenched and blessed. In this source of living water is where I am resourced by the power of the Holy Spirit. The other sur sources were bitter, murky, and could not quench me. I did not know what to do. Now I know who the source of the living water is, Jesus. I am truly satisfied and filled because his living water goes, gives me life throughout my mind, body, and soul. It refreshes and revives me. Jesus gives me life for eternity. Jesus cried out, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in Jesus, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Jesus also said, do not forsake me, the fountain of living waters, and make for yourself cistern, broken cistern that cannot hold water. Jesus said, whoever drinks of the water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. The water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. I pray that Jesus gives us today this water that we may not thirst, 
nor come to the bitter, murky waters to draw any more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're okay. Just like to uh, thank the church and everyone that uh, gave uh, a hand in sharing the, the scripture and uh, the special music. Um, it's always a, a great opportunity to, to share the little bits and pieces of who we are that makes church something special. One of the things that I love doing is grocery shopping, and people think that's a little bit funny, but one of the aisles that I will oftentimes go down is the water aisle, and we have many different types of water. You know, we have uh, San Pellegrino, we have Perrier, we have... Uh, Montelier, this is a new one, Smart Water. We uh, have Art to Water, and it has art labels. You know, we, we have uh, Aquafina, it comes in a personal size. Now, some of this water that we have is sparkling, some of it is uh, in glass bottles, some of it's in plastic bottles. We, we also have, you know, different things that we can drink water with, you know, if you even want to have a to-go glass, you can, you can take your water to go. You can put straws in it. You know, we, we have so many things that we have just around water, but at the end of the day, it's still water. If we wanted living water, well, then we have to go to a different source. I'd like us to open up our Bibles to Genesis 26. And that's the scripture that I'm going to be investing some time in today to help us see where do we get living water. Genesis 26, verse 1, it says, There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Ger. You know, the, the famine in the land before the famine is kind of like what's going on today. In the, the world that we live in, we have all kinds of different problems and, and difficulties, and then we have this virus come and infect the world that we live in. Verse 2, it says, Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in this land that I shall tw tell you. Dwell in this land. I will be with you, and I will bless you. You know, Nancy mentioned in her poem today that sometimes the places that we live in, we think are deserts. You know, sometimes it might be our marriage. We might feel that way. Or, or our job, maybe even our home, the society we live in. There's just... It's not going the way that we want. But no matter what happens in life, we always have the opportunity to invite God into where we live and what's going on. It then carries on in the rest of verse 3. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all of these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. You know, no matter what's going on in our life, I'm of the opinion that God can step into us and help us to live a better life. We have difficulties, yes, God can help us with those. If we have a problem with our marriage, God can help us with that. If we're struggling with a job or many other things, God has the ability to make our desert fertile if he is with us. I'd like to, to skip down to verse 12. It says, Isaiah, sorry, Isaac, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year 
a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper. He continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. And so the Philistines envied him. You know, God blesses many of us. And sometimes when God blesses us, we need to be careful that we share our blessings with others because if we don't, what may end up happening is other people around may look at us and get envious and get jealous. So when God blesses us, I would like to encourage us to also be a blessing to the people around us, our friends, our families, sometimes even the stranger that's within our gate. I believe that when God blesses us, we need to be careful to be true to the calling that we have to help others. We can do this in, in many different ways. You can, you can talk to people, you can make phone calls, you can become friends, you can even get online and, and help with different projects that are going on like ADRA. I'd like to read from verse 15. It says, now the Philistines had stopped up or put dirt in the wells, which his father Abraham's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father. And they had filled them with earth. And Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. You know, wells in the desert are very, very important. Without a source of running water, we would have no opportunity to be rehydrated, to be able to drink, to be able to carry on in our lives. You know, this is so important. We even have people that, that take the water from wells and either bottle it into bottles so we can carry with us, or they run it through pipes for the, the city and we have running water in our homes. But what ended up happening here is the jealousy that the Philistines had caused them to take buckets and buckets of dirt and they filled in and they filled in and they filled in all kinds of dirt into the wells and they completely filled it over and, well, the wells became a bit of a lemon. There was no use to almost have them any more because what could you do with a well that's completely filled in with dirt and rocks and debris. In verse 17, it says, Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gur, and he dwelt there. And Isaac again dug the wells of water, which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham, and he called them by name which his father had called them. You know, Isaac redug the wells of his father. He wasn't just content to, to let the wells be dug in, so he decided that he was going to, to do some hard work. He was going to put some gloves on, and he was going to get his his different shovels that he had, and he was going to do some digging. Now, some of the, 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 the people that Isaac was with dug with, with maybe big shovels and small shovels, and, and some probably got out brooms and swept the, the area clean. Some maybe even got rakes and stuff like that and, and cleaned different parts. But what ended up happening was Isaac took the opportunity to redig the wells of his father. Now, the wells that we have in, in our lives, I think every single person here today has a well in their own heart. And sometimes, because of what happens in society, our wells get stopped up with worldly ideas. Our wells get stopped up with racism, with sexism, with 
with violence, with lust, with idolatry, pride, greed, our wells get all clogged up. And, and what all of this dirt does is it stops the flow of water down beneath. And I'm wondering if it's not time, if God hasn't allowed a situation in, in our world for us to redig some of the wells of our fathers and rename them. I think that we have lots of truths that we have to maybe re-go over and look at our own lives and take out the lust and take out the, the dirt of greed and, and, and sexism and, well, whatever otherworldly ideas are in our hearts that are stopping up the water of God from flowing back and forth. You know, doing this work is, is lonely, hard work. Sometimes it's dirty. But I want to ask you a question today. And Pastor mentioned it earlier today. Is God just someone that we want to worship on the weekend? That we, we go to church, we, we worship on the weekend, we, we visit God for a bit in his house, and then we return back to our house, or, or maybe we want it the other way around. Maybe we want to ask the almighty living God to come and live with us. Not just to stay at our house for the weekend, but to live with us all through the week. This is one of the prayers that I've had for myself as an individual, but also for us as a church, that a little at a time, we can ask God to be with us, to teach us, to talk to us, to help us reach down and redig the wells of our own hearts. Because this is something that I have to do, that we have to do. I believe that to be spiritually honest means that we need to remove the debris that's stopping up this water. In John 7, 37 to 38, Jesus ends up saying, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. I'd like us to turn back to Genesis 26, 19. It said, also Isaac's servants dug there in the valley and found a new well of running water. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, this water is ours. So he named the well Essek because they quarreled with him. And they dug another well, and they argued over that one too. So he called the name of the well Sitna. You know, as we're asking God to, to reach down into our hearts and to help us remove what's there, I'd like to ask us, us as a group, as a church, as a fellowship of believers, what is the condition of your heart? What is the condition of your well? Is it filled with complaining and quarreling? Or has God made room for you in this area. You see, Isaac, after he had redug his father's wells, he went out to dig new wells. And people gathered around and grabbed them, and he said, okay, I'm going to give that well to you, and I'm going to give this well to you. And then in verse 22, it says, and he moved from there, and he dug up another well, and they did not quarrel over it, so he gave it the name Rehoboth because he said, now the Lord has made room for us. We shall be fruitful in this land. You know, it's one thing for you to take the opportunity to ask God into your heart, to ask God to help you clean your heart, to, to take the dirt out of your heart. But what I see 
Isaac doing here is going one step further. He's also digging new wells. He's helping other people in the land have the ability to also have that clean running water. You know, I think every single generation has the opportunity to help dig a well for someone else. You know, the Bible ends up saying, as iron sharpens iron. You know, I, I have a, a file here, and what they would oftentimes do is they would sharpen their shovels using a file, and as iron sharpens iron, I believe so a man sharpens the countenance of his brother, which to me, what, what that ends up saying is, is, is we have an opportunity to help our friends, our family, our loved ones, and again, sometimes the stranger within our gates, we have an opportunity sometimes to help them dig a well. We have brothers in the community that we live in, sometimes our neighbors even, that we can share with them the water that we have and we can talk to them and love them and help them dig a well. You know, we, we all worship in this church. You know, this is a well for our community and, and probably many of us here worship, but most of the people that worship here didn't actually build this well. Somebody else in the past in our history, they built this well and we can now worship here. We didn't have the opportunity to collect this water ourselves. Somebody else collected this water and bottled it as a convenience to us. But like I said before, I believe every single generation has the opportunity to help somebody else build a well. In verse 23, it says, Then he went up from there to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear. And Pastor made mention of, of this thought in Sabbath school lesson this morning. Fear isn't having uh, a, a, a being scared of God. It's learning to obey God, having a holy awe. And God says, I am with you. Do not be afraid, but have a holy awe of me, for I am with you. I will bless you and will multiply you for your, you and your descendants because of my servant Abraham. You know, God is always willing to help people clean out their own wells. You know, I believe that God is also willing to to help us dig new wells. And no matter where we go, whenever we ask God into those two areas, God, please help me clean my well, or God, help me go out and, and dig a new well so that somebody else can have a relationship with you, God is always there. It says in verse 25, so that he built an altar there and he called on the name of the Lord and he pitched his tent. And there Isaac's servants dug another well. You know, as we dig wells, oftentimes what we come across is, is we come across rocks. You know, things that as we're pulling out, we, we have all of these rocks that we dig out. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, some of them get stuck and and we have the opportunity, these hardships and disappointments, to lay them at the feet of everyone. And what happens is as we lay them at people's feet and we throw them at people, people get hurt. And we break our ankles. And, and what we have an opportunity to do instead is to put these rocks together and give them an ability to praise God. And that's what Isaac did. As he dug his wells, he dug out stones, and he, he made an altar with these stones so that he could turn around and, and make a sacrifice and, and make an offering to God. And, and the difficulties and hardships that he went through, he used as an opportunity to tell other people, we dug a well. 
Through the difficulties, we dug a well. Through the muck, we dug a well. God dug a well in us and in our hearts, but look at the water that we have. Come, taste and see the water. You know, Jesus ends up meeting a woman at a well. And Jesus, nor the woman, dug that well. It was actually dug by Jacob. It's called Jacob's well, and and it goes on to say in John 4, verse 6, Then a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? Now, this well was 280 feet deep. 280 feet deep. That's a long way down. But the well in her own heart was deeper than that. And I think what God ended up doing is he allowed Jesus to touch this woman in a way so that her heart would be cleansed and all of the dirt, the 280 feet of dirt and debris and rocks and stones came out of her heart. And to me that's profound because in a short conversation she was so excited that she had met the Messiah. She had met the one that they had waited for for all of these years. And then what ends up happening is the living water that Jesus promised flowed in her heart. And Jesus said, if you believe in me, from out of you will flow living water. And that's what happened. This woman allowed Jesus to take all of the hurt and pain out of her life, but then she ran home to her community, to her village, and she said, Come and see the man that we've waited for. And they all came back. In John verse, um, chapter 4, verse 39, it says, Many of the Samaritans from that day believed in him because of this woman's testimony. She said, he told me everything that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him, please stay with us for another two days. And they believed because of his words and because many more of them became believers. You know, they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said, but now we have heard from ourselves. And we know that this man really is the savior of the world. You know, these people that lived in, in the same village as this woman didn't come and listen to Jesus just because of fancy ideas and fancy stories. What she said is, this is real Come and see. You know, sometimes I, I think that we make the gospel a little bit too complicated. Sometimes we just need to say, here's the water, come and have a drink. We simply need to bring people to the source of the living water. In Matthew 28, 16 to 20, Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you even to the end of the age. Now, I have two small little thoughts that I'd like to share with you before I close. In John 16, 33, Jesus ends up saying, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulations, rocks, and stones, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus ends up saying to each and every one of us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
You know, digging wells is hard work in our own hearts, and digging wells for other people to drink is also hard, difficult work. And sometimes there might even be walls that divide us. But where there is walls that divide us, I, I think that God is a master at removing walls. And he takes the bricks down one at a time so that we can have a, a knowledge and information so that we can become friends with each other. And then he uses these same bricks that he removed from the walls to build bridges of friendship and community, one with another. Because I believe, although Jesus, God, is the great wall remover, he is also the great bridge builder. But I have another belief. Jesus is also the great well digger so that the water of life can flow through us to others. I'd like to ask that you be blessed today. I'd like to, to ask that, that God's face shine upon you, that as we ask God for, for a new heart, a heart of flesh, that he will give this to us. I, I ask that, that God gives to us the living water that will flow through us to others. I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to thank uh, Andrew. Uh, he is one of two elders in the church that I've ever had who loves to preach using pictures. <laughs> I had one up north who also enjoyed doing that, using pictures and, or, or things uh, in order to illustrate uh, messages, and, uh, and it's great. Um, you, get, uh, you get the best of both worlds. And so we'd like to thank um, Andrew to... Uh, uh, for providing the uh, message this morning. Uh, I hope that you are blessed, and um, uh, certainly uh, I was, and those of us who are here, uh, and I'm sure that uh, those of you in the audience. Uh, I'm sorry that at, uh, a few minutes ago that uh, the internet uh, just for a few seconds went off, and so maybe uh, uh, some of you got uh, turned, uh, tuned out of the, uh, out of the uh, live stream. And so I hope that you were able to join, join us back up again. And uh, it happens. It happened uh, on Friday, the same thing. I was in a meeting, a Zoom meeting, and uh, also lost the connection for a few seconds. And, uh, and so uh, this is uh, technology we have to live with. Uh, and so, but we praise God for, for having this uh, technology available for us. I would like to uh, uh, also ask you that, as you saw this morning, um, that there, there were those that sent uh, either a, um, a scripture reading, um, a, a prayer uh, in, in the form of a poem. It can be just a prayer in the form of a prayer, maybe a family praying together. Uh, and so I would love uh, for those of you who are willing to also um, uh, produce little videos like this, a minute, two minutes long, uh, or maybe even if it's a song, uh, and just send it. Uh, I will give you the information, and you can send it to my Dropbox. And uh, because usually the video files will be of um, will be large, and so you can't send it over email or whatever like that. And so you, we can uh, put it into the Dropbox, and uh, and then I can pull it out and hand it over to uh, the uh, audio visual department, and they'll put it on for Sabbath morning. And so. Um, I encourage you to participate in that way. It'll enhance our service a little bit, and it'll make it f make it feel more like home, and like usual. And so uh, this is uh, this is a great opportunity. And so uh, please take it. And I am uh, uh, take this initiative uh, for real. And uh, I am uh, looking forward to it, and having your participation also. So may God bless you again. I want to continue reminding you 
of the uh, four o'clock meeting and our weekly meetings and our Friday night youth meetings also uh, all over the uh, Zoom uh, meeting platform. And, uh, and we hope that uh, you participate and have uh, our uh, young people also participate. All right, we thank also uh, Daniel and Brother Jeremiah who participated in the Zoom meeting again for Sabbath School. And we're looking forward to next week to, uh, to lesson five. Uh, may God bless you. And then we'll see you soon later in the afternoon. And so I would like to close with prayer at this time and, um, and have a pleasant Sabbath afternoon. Let us pray. Father in heaven, again, we would like to thank you for another uh, pleasant and beautiful Sabbath. The sun is shining beautifully outside. And uh, we thank you for uh, this blessing uh, that you have provided for us. We hope, Lord, that uh, very soon we'll be able to enjoy this sun by being outside and being able to fellowship um, in this way uh, and, and have that sunshine not just uh, hitting our, our heads and our bodies and uh, producing that uh, much needed vitamin D, but, uh, but have it also that production of vitamin in our hearts, the vitamin that comes uh, from heaven. And so, Lord, we thank you, and we ask you that your Holy Spirit continue being present with us throughout the, the uh, Sabbath afternoon. And uh, may we enjoy uh, in our homes uh, our lunch uh, together as a family. Uh, and uh, we pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Have a beautiful, pleasant Sabbath day. Mm -hmm.